Missionary? Yes, sir. What do you do in the time of sadness? Wood. What do I do in a time of sadness? Yes. Well, um, depends. Well, first off and foremost, I always pray. That's the first thing I do. Because mm -hmm. um, we are, we're going to have sadness. Oops. That's a good example of a box I screwed up. Um, but I just feel like I'm not important anymore. Well, I am going to place this, and then that is probably one of the most important things to talk about. All right, so why do you think you're not important? What do you mean? Because people, how do you say it? They're not respecting that I'm there to help them. Oh, and I, they just I hope you've felt anything. respect being here. Yes, I feel it here because this is a nice, positive environment. But just out there, it's different. Okay, well, and it's it's Francois. I'm saying that correctly, right? The coronavirus yes. is getting to him. Okay, so um, there's a couple of things to understand. So first up and foremost, the world is not right. It's messed up. And it is under what's called a curse. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am. Okay, what do you what do you know what is the curse from that it's under? Um I'm not sure of the curse of the earth, but I know what a curse is. Hmm. Okay. So um some fundamental things to make sure we're having uh, a conversation where I understand when you're at. Um, Francois, do you believe that there is a God? Yes, I do. Okay. And are you familiar with the Bible? Yes, I am. Okay. Are you familiar with what happened in the beginning of the Bible um, between God and mankind? No, not really. Okay. Well, hold that thought. I'm going to walk over here. i got to drink some water real fast. So when you, in the in the beginning, do you remember where it says um, God created Adam and Eve? You know that part? Yes. Okay. Yes. What happened with Adam and Eve? Do you know what happened between them and God? Didn't they eat an apple they weren't supposed to? <laughs> no, nothing says it's an apple. But you are correct. Uh -huh. They ate. They yes. ate a fruit that they were told not to eat. Now, it's not important what the fruit is, it's important what the fruit represented. And what the fruit represented was it was from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? And so, God made this whole garden, everything was great. In fact, it was so great that they were, they were actually butt naked, walking around all the time, and it was good. They didn't get cold, Nobody felt uncomfortable about it. It was literally a good and perfect world. Great food to eat, beautiful scenery, lots of good work to do. But there was this one rule that God made. And he said, you will not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For on the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Okay. So basically, yeah. the decision they had to make was this. Do you trust God? Who made everything and made everything good or and says what's good and evil or do you want to try to take control for yourself and be your own God and there was a, a demon who's a demon means a fallen angel his name's Lucifer and he came into the garden and he tempted Adam and Eve and basically said God's lying to you and if you eat from that tree you're gonna be just like God and it was a lie. And he's like, you're not going to die. It's going to be great. Go ahead and eat it. And the problem was Adam and Eve messed up big time. And they, they rebelled against God. They ate the fruit. And they realized when they did it that what God said was true. And the knowledge of good and evil ended up being the opening up of a curse upon mankind because we rebelled against God. He cursed everything. The curse of what's called sin entered everything. 
messed up everything down to the genetic level. The entire creation groans under the sin of cur or the curse of sin. And so when you look around the world today, realize that sadness, death, cancer, coronavirus, all this really terrible stuff is a product of sin. Does that make sense? Yes. So now the question is, all right, well, what does that mean for me when I'm operating in the world and I get sad and I wonder, you know, what's, why am I here? What am I, what am I important? What does that mean for me? Well, one of the questions is, do you know how you stand with God? Do you think he's happy with you or unhappy with you? I'm sure. You're not sure. Okay. Well, the good news is there's some questions we can ask to find out. So the, the first question, Francois, is um, in your lifetime, how many lies do you think you've told? I would say thousands. Thousands. Okay. Maybe hundreds. Okay. Maybe even tens of thousands. Okay. So... If, if you've told, you know, a lot of lies, what do you call somebody who tells a lot of lies? A liar. You're exactly right. Okay. Have you ever stolen anything in your life, even if it was small? Take Does a, on accident count? Uh, no, deliver, like you took something without permission, you deliberately wanted it and, it, and it wasn't yours to have, you stole it. No. This wouldn't be another one of those lies now, would it? No. I've accidentally stolen something, but not purposely. No, I'm talking about intentionally. Um, there might have been, like, it doesn't matter the size either, like a piece of candy, some change. Um, doesn't matter the value of it. Downloaded something from the internet that um, you should have paid for, but you end up downloading because you found where it was pirated or something like that. Have you ever done anything like that? No. Okay. Well, that's admirable. All right. Have you ever taken um, God's name and used it as a cuss word? Sadly, yes. Okay. That's called I'm blasphemy. Not happy about it. That's called blasphemy. It's very serious. God takes His name to be um, to be holy, and it is to be honored and always spoken of with a level of reverence and honor. And in the Old Testament, when you use blasphemy just once. They actually used to stone you to death for it. So it's something that is very, very serious. And we need to understand how God sees it in his eyes. Is He gave us life. And then we exchange his name for a four-letter filth word. All right. Um, now, I don't know how old you are, and you don't need to tell me. But um, see if this one is something that you can understand. Jesus said, you know it is written that you shouldn't commit adultery. But I tell you, even if you've looked at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked at another person with lust? Yes. Okay. And then the last, saying hello. The last question is, have you ever uh, been really angry at somebody? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Jesus said, if you're angry at your brother and call him a fool... You're guilty of committing murder in your heart. All right. So now I've walked you through some of the things that God makes very clear um, we're not supposed to do. And I want to be clear, uh, Francois, this is not me judging you. This is you've admitted to me that you're a lying, blaspheming, adulterer at heart, and a murderer at heart. Okay. And the Bible tells us that it's allotted once for a man to die and then the judgment. So let's say today was the day and you're standing before God and he opens up the books on your whole life, everything you've ever done, everything you've ever said, even the secret thoughts of your heart, and he judges you by his perfect and good law, would he find you innocent or would he find you guilty of breaking his law? He would find me guilty. You're exactly right. So then should he, as a good and righteous judge, send you to heaven, or should he send you to hell for breaking his laws? Hell. 
You're exactly right. Now, Francois, understanding that, does that concern you? Yes, very as, much so. As rightly it should. That shows that you're mature in your thoughts. You understand now your predicament with God. He's not happy with you. He understands that you have broken his commands. You have used his name as a cuss word. And he would justly send you to hell. And you understand that's a scary thing. Now, here's what's interesting. God says in his word that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to turn from evil is understanding. Now, why is it that fear is important is because it alerts us to danger. And that's what you now understand. There's an alertness here to danger. There's a danger of the wrath to come. And if that was the only thing we had to talk about, then it would be very bleak indeed, but it's not. See, this is the bad news. The situation that we are in with God, the curse that's upon the earth, the sadness, the death, the destruction all around us. But that's not the only thing. There's also something called the gospel. And gospel means good news. And it's the good news about how God has made a way for guilty sinners like you and I to be saved from the wrath to come. Do you know what the good news is? No. So we had talked about how God is just, he is perfect in his righteousness, and he is also aware of everything that has gone on, every single sin that has ever happened. He knows about them all. And he has to be sure that they're brought to justice. And you're familiar with court systems, right? If somebody's done something wrong, then there's a penalty to be paid? Yes. Okay. So I want you to imagine you're in a court and there's a there's somebody there. I'm writing a tale. <laughs> there's somebody there in the in the the courtroom and he's admitted to doing something very terrible. He's killed a woman and 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 hit her body and he's confessed to the judge. He says, "Judge, um, I did it. I'm guilty, but I heard that um, that you're a forgiving judge, and so I want to say I'm sorry. Will you please forgive me? If that judge said, you know what? It's okay. I forgive you. I'm just going to let you go. What would you think of that judge? A corrupt judge. It's not a very good judge. You're right. He would be corrupt, as Chris just said. You're exactly right. So, if that is the way we think about an earthly judge, now think about the perfect judge of the universe. He can't just let us go because then he would be corrupt. So he has some tension here. On one side, he knows we're guilty and we deserve the wrath to come, but that's not all he is. He's not all wrath, all judgment, all righteousness. He is also love. He's also full of mercy and full of grace. And he doesn't want you to go to hell. He doesn't want us to pay for eternity for the sins we've done. In fact, he actually wants us with him. But there's tension here because he can't just let us go. Somebody has to pay the penalty for our sins. And God makes it very clear. Just a single lie makes us a liar. A and all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. So just one lie means that we have to spend forever in a lake of fire to pay for it. So we're not even going to pay for a single sin. But somehow, we have to have all of our sins paid for at once. And so God, knowing that we were not capable of doing that, he did something incredible. 2,000 years ago, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be born on earth as a man. He was born miraculously of a virgin. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. And he actually lived a perfect life. He never sinned, not even once. He did everything that was pleasing to his Father in heaven. And then he went to something called the cross. Have you ever heard of the cross before? Yes. Do you know what it was for? 
Wasn't it to hammer him with with nails against the cross? Yes, they they put nails through your arms and through your feet, and they hung you on it to die an excruciatingly painful death. And when he went to the cross, he went there as an innocent man. See, he did not deserve to be there. He never did anything wrong. As he was on that cross, I know, I mean a bunch of his Father in Heaven shows up, God himself, and he dumps out his wrath on Jesus for your lies, for your blasphemy, for your adulterous heart, for your murder. So God dumps his wrath on Jesus Christ. And right before Jesus died, he said three very important words. He said, it is finished. Your debt, Francois, has been paid. And then he died. And he was buried in a tomb for three days. Do you happen to know what happened after three days? He stood back up. He didn't just stand back up. He came back from the dead. He was resurrected. Yeah. He was dead in a tomb, and he came back from the dead. Do you know anybody personally who's come back from the dead? Uh, no, not in real life. No, not in real life. Well, this is real life. Jesus came back from the dead in real life. And this proved that he was who he said he was. God himself. And that he could do what he said he did. When he said, it is finished, he can back that up. He's God, so he can pay for all of our sins all at once. He was seen by his disciples. He was seen by 500 people over the course of 40 days. And then he ascended into heaven. And right now, Francois, he is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And he's advocating for you. See, he loves you so much that he wants you to hear this good news, even though you're playing a video game, even though we're a continent, an ocean apart from each other, he wants you to know that he's paid for your sins. See, he makes you an offer. He says, Francois, give me your sins, and I'm going to give you the righteous life that I led, so that on the day that you die, you're not seen as a guilty sinner deserving hell. You're not even seen as a forgiven sinner. You're actually seen as the very righteousness of Jesus Christ himself. So this offer is free. You cannot earn it. All you can do is accept it. And there's two things to do to accept it. One of them is to repent. Do you know what the word repent means? No, I do not. So repent, it's very simple. I'm going to give you a visual. Repent means if you're going this way, you turn and you go the other way. That's all repent means. It means you, you stop going the direction you're going towards the world. You stop going. You forsake your sins. You turn to God and you admit that he's right, that, that you deserve the wrath to come. But then the second thing is you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You trust that he did what he said he did, that he has paid for all of your sins on the cross. Every sin you've ever done and every sin you ever will do. He has paid for them 100% and you trust it and then you are free of the fear of hell. You're free from sin. You're free from death. You are actually welcomed into the kingdom of God as a son of the living God. You are given a new heart. You're made a new creation in Christ. And you are welcomed into a family who will literally love you forever. They can never be taken away from you. You will always be welcomed by them. And you'll be welcomed by God himself. Because when he sees you, he'll actually see the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ, on you. This is the gospel. This is the good news about how God has made a way for guilty sinners like you and I to be forgiven. Do you understand what I've shared with you? Yes. Now here's the question for you, Francois. Do you think what I have shared with you is the truth, or do you think that this is false? 
I think it's true. Well, then the question becomes, when are you going to do as Jesus Christ commands you and repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Okay. I don't know when. That's a fair... I'll try to do it as soon as I can. That's a fair answer, and I appreciate that. And here's the question I'll ask you on top of that. Do you know the day and the hour when you're going to die? No. No, none of us do, do we? So as you know, the no. coronavirus is happening right now. A lot of people who didn't plan on dying have died. 150,000 people just normally die every day. People die in their sleep. People die of accidents. All kinds of things happen with people who can die. So we don't know how much time we have. So there's an urgency about this. Do you understand? Yes. And that is, that is between you and God. And I want to be clear that, Francois, I love you. I know we've never met, but God has given me a new heart eight years ago. I became a follower of Jesus Christ. And because of that, he has given me a love, I'll be honest, I don't truly understand. But I love you, and I want you to know how much God loves you, that he would die on a cross for you so that you could have a relationship with him. And so that was a very long explanation of the most important truth I can give you that answers your question about how do you deal with sadness. Ultimately, the way that we deal with sadness is by realizing that our condition right now is on a cursed earth because of sin that we've committed against God, but that he has made a way for us to be reconciled to him and be welcomed as his son into his family if we repent and put our faith and trust in him. And now I'm not going to say that you do that and poof, all sadness will go away because that's not true. But it is true that we are given a comfort, a, a peace that surpasses all understanding. I am not concerned about the wrath to come because I know that on the day that I die, I'm going to be welcomed into heaven as a son, a living God because I have repented and put my faith and trust in him. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, do you have any questions? No, I think I just need to process it. Okay. A little. Well, I want to be clear, uh, Francois, this is why we're here. We are here because we're Christians and because we love you and because we want you to know this good news, that God has made a way for us to be forgiven. Because ultimately, that's where sadness lies, is in our sin. It is, it is a product of sin when we see fathers abandoning their children, when we see people dying, when we see disease, when we see cancers, when we see viruses. All of these things around us are all from the curse, but it's not always going to be like this. There is coming a day when everything's going to change. And it's going to happen for most of us when we die and we stand before God. But there's also coming a day when Jesus Christ is coming back and he's going to actually put this all down. There's going to be a new earth. There's going to be a new creation. And it is going to be amazing. And that's why I want you to be there. So that's why I've shared this good news with you. And I wonder, would it be okay if we prayed with you, Francois? Would that be all right? Yes. Now, normally I have Pastor James here, and I know he's around here somewhere. Pastor James, can you hear us? Would you mind praying uh, with Francois and I? And, and Caleb's here as well. And, and uh, Grant as well is here. I died and I need back in the tribe. All right, I'll let you back in. Give me, a, give me one moment. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor James. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity uh, to talk with us. Lord God, we came asking questions, Lord. We pray that that you might find the answer to those questions. Lord, and the answer 
shoot us with his um his faith. So Lord God, we just pray that you give him faith to to repent from his sin and Lord God to put his full trust in you. Lord, each one of us are loved by you. And I ask you just to help him understand that love. And Lord, we just lift him up before you today and we pray that that it will be done. Your grace and your mercy just just abound in his life, Lord God. And we pray all things. Amen. Where did Francois go? Oh, my thirst knocked me out. <laughs> All right, well, I need to be back in the tribe. I died. <laughs> Can we get you back up somehow? Yeah, Just... don't, don't like how, that, but you get some water how do we get you some water? Oh, no, where does body go? All right, there you are. Okay. <laughs> I was like, did we really lose Francois right at the end? <laughs> nice timing. Uh, Francois, um, your your question about sadness, I want to be clear. That is a question that we all suffer with and we all struggle with. But I want you to know, I care about you. Pastor James cares about you. We got Grant in here, that's Sole Deo Gloria. He cares about you. And you're important. You're not an accident. You didn't happen by some random coincidence. You're not just another, another, uh, you know, petri dish floating around on this accidental planet. You're actually purposely created by the living God, and He loves you, and you are important enough for Him that He died on a cross for you. And so you never need doubt how loved you are. Because even if not a single person on this whole planet loves you or cares about you, the God of the universe loves you and cares about you. And he proved it by dying for you. And now to back that up, he puts us here. And we love you and care about you. And we are here for you. And if you need anything at all or you have questions or you need prayer or you just you need to talk, we're here for this. That's what this server is built for. And so you've come to the right place, sir, and it was not by accident. I hope you see that. 